Hi, welcome to my 500 subscriber special. Apologies for the kind of thrown together setup here. Uh, I am not used to making these kinds of videos and I wanted to get this video out reasonably quickly so that I can move on to some of the other content that I have planned that I'm very excited about and I wanted to get it out for you guys uh, as quickly as I possibly could, but this is me and I want to start off by thanking you all so much for subscribing. 500 subscribers is amazing. Maloney's Coasters really is just my little hobby, my way of um, putting my passion uh, kind of into a creative outlet, I guess. So um, having the opportunity to share it with, with people and to have 500 people um, find it entertaining enough to to regularly tune in that's more than i ever could have shut up more than i ever could have asked for and i i'm so very very thankful i guess i want to talk a little bit about where the channel is going very soon i've got some great exciting things coming out in the next month or so keep an eye out for that that will include an international trip and if you don't know where it is and you do want spoilers I've already revealed it on my Instagram, give me a follow. But I think going forward you can uh, look forward to a more consistent schedule. I think I've been experimenting a lot with how often can I upload without kind of getting burned out. And I think I've found that like two to three videos and then a bunch of shorts every week is kind of my my healthy amount where I can I can do that and I can keep up with that and it's enough for me to feel satisfied with what I'm doing. Um, so, you know, two to three videos a week is what you can expect going forward. In the next month, that's going to include vlogs, that's going to include uh, more reviews, that's going to include uh, some collaboration videos, and I've got an idea for a series that I want to kind of throw out there. It might completely flop, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. But without further ado, um, you guys asked me some great questions and a good bunch of questions on both Instagram and YouTube, so I'm going to dive straight into answering them. Thank you so much to everybody who uh, submitted questions. I will be answering all the ones that I've gotten up to this point. If you hadn't submitted your question yet, feel free to submit it in the comments and I'll uh, answer in uh, the form of a reply. So starting with Heidi Honda Girl, what's it like working in operations and could I do it if I already have a full-time job? Well, kids are right. Operator is a really great job, and I don't just mean that because like I'm a, a roller coaster fan and I'm working in a theme park. Like obviously that's going to make you pretty happy. First of all, there is the enthusiast side. Uh, it's it's great to get an inside understanding of how coaster operations, ride operations, theme park operations in general actually work. That's been a really amazing learning experience for me that's kind of immersed me further than I ever have been before in the world of roller coasters. I have so much that I could say about my experience as an, op as an operator so far, um, but if I had to sum it up, I would say that the best part and also the worst Part of the job is that no two days are ever the same and no two rides are ever the same. Um, so on the, on the bad side of that it can be quite demanding. Some rides can be physical or fast paced so you can end up um, out on your feet, in the sun, uh, working in the heat, not a lot of shade, you know kind of constantly working a lot. Um, some rides are the complete opposite, where you're kind of just standing in the one place pressing buttons all day. So, you know, it, everything has its challenges. Of course, the, the guests, the, the riders are also quite challenging. Some days you can get very demanding people or um, people just really who want to make your day worse. But I, I find that I love those challenges as much as they can get to me at the time. And I also love the positive moments about it. I absolutely love roller coasters. So I love working on Big Dipper or Wild Mouse. That's a dream come true for me. Um, I also just love thrill rides in general. So I love to be kind of an entertaining operator and have fun on something like Hair Razor. Uh, but I also have a background in education and I really love working with kids So I'm even thriving if you put me somewhere like Coney Island or a kids ride like uh, Freaky Frogs, Little Nipper uh, Even things like the Ferris wheel uh, Those are the places where I get to do my best to make the day memorable for families as well So I've been very lucky. I've been trained on uh, a good mix of rides as an operator and as an attendant And I think that that's made the job a really brilliant experience for me very diverse, um, no two days are the same as I've said, and I always go into work wondering where I'm gonna be today and um, what's gonna happen today that's gonna make today unique and exciting and fun. As for the second part of your question, if you already have a full-time job, look, if you're really 
committed and it's what you want to do, I think you could logistically still do it, but it would definitely be tough. Peak hours for theme parks uh, tend to be on the weekends and most operator positions are probably going to be casual work, so there's no reason why you couldn't work your full-time job during the week um, and then get a job and work only on the weekends. But as I've said, it can be quite physically demanding, so um, and mentally demanding as well. So, so make sure that you're still giving yourself time off. Uh, even just working as an operator currently, that's my only um, proper job. I found it can be quite easy to burn out if you're working a lot of hours in a row. Um, and I am working on a part-time basis, so I definitely, I don't think I personally could manage a full-time workload as well. So logistically, yes. Would I do it? Probably not. USA coasters. How many defunct coasters have you been on? Great question. As you know, I love counting my credits. I love keeping track of stats uh, and all those sorts of things about uh, the rides that I've been on. So this question is right up my alley. I've been on three roller coasters that are completely defunct. Uh, those are Tower of Terror 2, Arkham Asylum, the Vacoma SLC at Movie World, and a more unique one, Snoopy's Great Race at Universal Studios Japan. That was a Senyo Kogyo family coaster. Um, I went to USJ when I was 10 years old. Um, that was just after, the year after Hollywood Dream opened, but I was a very, as a kid I was quite scared of rides, so I didn't go on any coasters except for the Snoopy roller coaster, uh, which is a huge regret because I'm still waiting on my first B&M credit. Um, but Snoopy's Great Race went defunct, was removed in 2020, I believe. Um, I have also been on two coasters that were relocated. Buzzsaw at Dreamworld, which was relocated to Gumbio World as Project Zero. I've also been on Project Zero, so I've been on both iterations of that one. And I have been on Surfrider at Wet n Wild Gold Coast, which has been removed and is currently being relocated uh, to Movie World. 360 Coasters, what were Coaster Studios like when you met them? Yeah, for those of you who haven't heard the story, uh, I was working at Luna Park when Taylor and Sarah from Coaster Studios came to the park uh, on their Australia trip. I was pretty excited to meet them. They've always been some of my favorite coaster creators. I watch their stuff a lot. Uh, and I unfortunately had missed out on working on the day that um, Sean and Charlotte from Theme Park Worldwide came earlier on. So I was very disappointed to miss meeting them and I was excited when I found out I was gonna be on the day um, that Coaster Studios were coming in. Um, another note, I was also operating Big Dipper on the day that Canopy Coaster came to the park. So check their videos out, you'll see me there. Taylor and Sarah were so nice, uh, so down to earth. Um, I was supervising Coney Island. Um, I kind of nervously, not wanting to interrupt, said hi to Sarah told her I love their videos. She actually went out of her way to bring Taylor over to have a conversation and it was like a proper conversation too. We had a really good chat about, um, they wanted to know what my favorite coasters were, what I thought about Australia's coasters like DC Rivals and Leviathan. Um, they also asked me about my trip to South Korea, which came up. Um, it kind of just felt like I was having a conversation with two enthusiasts rather than, you know, people that I've been watching uh, and and had kind of admired my whole life. So that was very cool of them. They seemed very down-to-earth well, They also gave me a wristband that one up there um, Which was very nice and they um, It was the little things that really made me remember it like um, as they left Coney Island They made sure to turn around and give me a little wave so that it, it felt like a very special interaction like they actually Wanted to make something of it. Um, I would have just expected, you know, Hi, they, I'm sure they meet subscribers all the time. Um, that's all I would have expected, but the, the fact that they were actually, or seemed actually excited to chat instead of just being like, ugh, another fan or another subscriber, that was really cool. It's been a huge highlight of my time at Luna Park, definitely. It's Tasman. If you could operate any ride in the world, what would it be? Really interesting question. Um, I've got a huge bucket list for rides that I want to go on, but I haven't thought a lot about what I would want to operate. I can think of a few things that spring to mind. Um, something like King Dakar uh, at Six Flags Great Adventure or whatever the new iteration of Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point is gonna be. That's a roller coaster which really stretches the limits of human engineering. So getting to operate it and see how it works behind the scenes, that'd be super cool. Um, operating a really well themed attraction would be really up my alley. Something like Velocicoaster or a Disney ride. Um, that would be amazing. I'd really love to be part of the magic of a park like that. And then I also think that working on a large scale coaster somewhere in the US, um, something like a B&M, 
uh, an RMC or a coaster like Millennium Force, El Toro. Um, from what I've seen of operators over there having never been to the US, they have really well drilled operating crews, they're super focused on maximum efficiency. Um, so getting to be part of a, a roller coaster crew that runs like clockwork and is like the pinnacle of the operating game, that would be really satisfying for me. So I think, I guess, crossing those first and last points, maybe something like King Dakar would be top of the list. Although also from my experience at Luna Park, the thing that I love operating almost as much as I love operating roller coasters is drop towers. I love working on hair razors, so anywhere that I end up working that has a drop tower, train me there too. I like to get up to a bit of tomfoolery. Christina Chen, I was wondering whether you'd ever consider making a video where you explain roller coaster terminology that you use in your analysis videos. That is a fantastic idea and I will get right on that. I'm not sure if I would do better, uh, do it better as one video or maybe a few videos focusing on different areas, like you mentioned forces, elements, um, you could do different coaster types, you know, that sort of thing. But it's it's a great idea. I'll work it out. Um, I'll make something happen. Uh, Christina also asked a main question, which was, what would be the city you would recommend for someone to visit if they're interested in riding the roller coasters there? And in addition, what is your favorite roller coaster you've ridden outside of Australia? Great questions. Um, for cities that I've actually been to that I can recommend, because um, I'm quite early in my traveling game, first and most obvious, the Gold Coast here in Australia. You've got Movie World uh, with DC Rivals, Superman, Green Lantern. Dream World has Steel Ta Taipan and Gold Coaster. Uh, sea World has Leviathan, Jet Rescue. That's by far the most concentrated area of good roller coasters here in Australia. The other one that I've been to and have kind of covered most of the coasters in that area that I can recommend is Seoul in South Korea. Um, so you've got Lotte World in the city. That's probably one of the best themed parks I've ever been to. Um, Atlantis Adventure is a really great coaster and the other two coasters there also very really surprised me as well. Uh, plus you're not far away from Everland which has T-Express. Um, although after that, you know, there's kind of a bit of a steep drop-off in quality uh, to things like Soul Land. What's your blood type? Oh, negative. Universal donor. Universal donor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've also been to Tokyo. Tokyo Disneyland was incredible, and I know that the lineup around Tokyo is also very stacked, but unfortunately I didn't get to go to any other parks on that trip, so I can't really speak to um, how good or bad I found it. In terms of cities that I haven't been to though, that I think would be the best if you're planning a trip just to ride roller coasters and the ones that are at the top of my bucket list, most obvious answer is probably Orlando. Uh, pretty boring answer, but I don't think there's any other city that has so many world-class parks in such close proximity to each other. Um, other ones that spring to mind, LA, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Beijing, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, uh, any city in the west of Germany. Um, the US has a few states like Pennsylvania and Ohio that are really great for coasters, but the, car the, the parks sorry, are, are kind of spread apart. Um, and Europe tends to be the same. You've got the countries like the UK, Sweden, the Netherlands, Belgium, Denmark, um, all really stacked with quality coasters, but they're spread kind of all over the country. But they are all small states and countries, so there's no reason you couldn't make a trip out of that. Second question, and sorry for the weird change of angle here, uh, I just got onto editing this and there was some background noise and I couldn't fix it. Um, my favourite coaster outside of Australia is Roaring Timbers at Sunworld Hong Tom Nature Park in Phu Quoc in Vietnam. Uh, it's GCI, it's fantastic, it's a brilliant terrain coaster, full of airtime and laterals, I absolutely love it. Closely followed by the Wrath of Zeus, which I'll talk about in another question coming up soon. Sorry if my voice sounds rough, by the way, I have um, allergies. Driveser89, what got you into coasters and what coaster got you into them? Oh, there are so many to choose from. I've always kind of been obsessed with rides and roller coasters. Um, I was raised out in the country in New South Wales and of course every town has its agricultural show. Um, and I loved that weekend more than Christmas. Um, I always wanted to go and see what rides were there at my local show. Um, at first when I was little it was just to watch them. I just was just obsessed with the kinetic energy of them. But uh, eventually I did start riding them. My first memory of being on a roller coaster is the Wild Mouse at Luna Park, Sydney. Uh, my dad brought me to Sydney for my seventh birthday, uh, and we went to Luna Park. Uh, I was still quite scared to get on rides at that stage, but the operators on the Wild Mouse managed to talk me into getting on it with my dad, and um, that, that ride has stuck with me ever since. 
We did go on a few family trips to the Gold Coast as well, and I remember really being captured by kind of the the mysticism of the parks, particularly rides like Bermuda Triangle and Thunder River Rapids. Um, those were the rides that felt like an experience, like you're in another world. That was so captivating for me as a kid, and I think that's influenced the way I really value theming in a ride today. But I think the coaster that I can credit most with my obsession with roller coasters is Tower of Terror at Dreamworld. Like I said, I was really obsessed with rides um, right from an early age, and right about the time that I started to actually get the courage to go on the big rides was when Tower of Terror went through the refurbishment to become Tower of Terror 2. Uh, and I followed along with every step of that renovation. I probably annoyed the hell out of my mum and dad begging to go back to the Gold Coast again. It took me a few years to convince someone to take me, but um, we did go to Dreamworld, uh, and that trip definitely hooked me into riding coasters, and uh, after that I was an addict. But f just, even just following along with the renovation also got me hooked on researching coasters, following coaster news from around the world, so I was definitely obsessed by that point. Also extra shout outs to Wild Mouse again and to Big Dipper uh, because I've now spent almost a year and a half working at Luna Park and that has been a very special experience that has confirmed that um, I want the roller coaster world to be an important part of my life for a very long time. Aubrey Cook 641 favorite Luna Park ride. Ooh, To ride my favorite is the Wild Mouse um, closely followed by Hair Razor and Big Dipper. Um, you can't really beat the classics though, so Wild Mouse. Um, but despite the many criticisms I do have of it, I don't actually dislike Dipper. I think it's just okay. Um, and I think a lot of people sleep on the Hair Razor, but it's actually a really intense drop tower. And we get a lot of people coming to the park and saying that it's... Like a lot of enthusiasts come to the park and say that it's actually very intense. Plus, of course, the view. My next pick after that would probably be Boomerang. I'm not a Sledgehammer fan. Um, as a taller person, the restraints can be quite uncomfortable on your shoulders, which just isn't great, especially if you do 360. I find that quite painful. But to work on, to operate or attend, my favorites are Big Dipper, uh, Hair Razor, and Wild Mouse. And I also have a soft spot for Volare, which was the first ride that I ever learned to operate, and Ferris Wheel. Um, but they're all very different and I love them for different reasons, so maybe one day I'll, I'll make a video a bit more about operating each ride and what it's like. Theme Park Tiger, what was your main reason for becoming an enthusiast? So like I said in those last questions, it was an obsession that kind of developed early in life, maybe just from the aesthetics and the kinetic energy of, of rides. I'm the kind of person that fixates, like I just get obsessed with something and I can't think about anything else. Uh, and coasters have been one of those things that's kind of been a fixation right throughout my life. I've really begun to appreciate rides like an art form, like there's so much that goes into a good ride from layout forces, theming, the ride precinct. I, I think roller coasters are kind of just often the most impressive version of that art form. So I love rides, but roller coasters are kind of like the peak. But to add on to that question, I have to say that I think I've only become what I would describe as an enthusiast uh, since I started at Luna Park. I would say Luna Park is what has made me become an enthusiast. So to get a little bit personal for a second, but hopefully some of you can relate, um, I was actually quite self-conscious about the fact that I was obsessed with roller coasters when I was growing up, and I think I internalized this idea that I couldn't share my interest in roller coasters with anyone because like, I was out in country New South Wales, you're not going to find another enthusiast out there. So I thought I was kind of weird, and I didn't really share it with many people that I wasn't super close with and comfortable around. So it's kind of sad, but my enthusiasm was very private for most of my life. So I initially actually took the job at Luna Park because I was looking for something to pay the bills while I worked out what to do. Uh, I just finished university, I wasn't quite sure where I was going uh, yet, so I figured, you know, that's a fun job, it's I'd obviously rather operate a ride than stack shelves at a supermarket, it's gonna be fun. So I moved to Sydney, got that job just to help pay the rent, and I kind of fell in love with what I was doing there and realised, hey, I, I, I don't need to be looking for other things right now. This is this is what I want to do. Uh, I realized it was something that other people were interested in that I could be interested in. That wasn't something to be ashamed of. So um, yeah, that's kind of made me realize that's what I love and that's what I, I want to do. Since I started at Luna Park, I've met other enthusiasts. Some of them are now some of my best friends currently. Um, as you've seen in my vlogs, I'm now traveling a lot, going on different coasters. So I think Luna Park is what has given me exposure to rides, coasters, and kind of just put me constantly around a group of people who encouraged the roller coaster enthusiast in me. Um, 
And so it's grown from my little private internal obsession to something that I want to make videos about and get engaged with the enthusiast community and travel the world for and hopefully commit a good amount of time to. So yeah, the main reason is probably Luna Park. Um, the people, the energy of that place, it's really brought me out of my shell. Declano, what is a dream coaster on your bucket list? I have been waiting for this question and I have many and I refuse to narrow it down to just one. So I can give you the boring answers like Steel Vengeance, Velocicoaster, Iron Guazi, Lightning Rod, Fury 325. They're obviously all on my bucket list, but I'm going to try and think of some that probably wouldn't get mentioned. Maybe something you're not expecting. The coaster that is currently the number one on my bucket list is Ride to Happiness at Plopsaland Japan. Uh, I think that thing looks insane and I am so obsessed with the idea of getting on a Mark Extreme spinner. Um, obviously all the B&Ms, all the RMCs, but some, some more really unique and obscure ones. Dueling Dragons at Guangzhou Sunak Land in China. I've heard that it rarely duels, but still, this thing looks like something out of Roller Coaster Tycoon. Are you kidding me? That's insane. Uh, Ajanaika Dinaconda X2, personal must do's. I'm a sucker for a super intense ride, and from what I've heard, these might be as intense as it comes. Uh, and lastly, Mission Ferrari at Ferrari World in Abu Dhabi. Um, now that Dynamic Attractions has gone bankrupt, this might be the only SFX coast we ever get to see, so I'm very intrigued to see what it is and how it rides. I also really have a thing for strange and unique roller coasters, even if they end up being kind of bad. So I fully intend to ride some more obscure stuff. Uh, Vilda Hilda at Schwaben Park, Tranen at Scara Sommerland, uh, even things like Inversa at Aqualocos in Brazil, uh, and Dream Coaster at Dream City in Iraq. Declano actually asked another question. What is your favorite park in Victoria? Gunfire World. It has to be, right? I really love what they're doing down there. TNT, brilliant coaster. Um, the effort that they put into the theme and atmosphere that they have going on there, big thumbs up. Um, I think with an extra addition or two, it could definitely become one of my favorite parks in the country. Luna Park Melbourne's also pretty good. Uh, it's got a good flat collection. I like Scenic Railway. Um, the heritage there is really nice. I haven't been to Fun Fields yet. Uh, it doesn't have any credits, so it's not been high on my priority list, but I will have to check it out next time I'm in Melbourne. Um, an adventure park, it's fine. It's good for families. I've got the SBF credit, I don't need to drive to Geelong again. What kind of place is this? Rick's Robin, what roller coaster model or manufacturer are you looking forward to riding the most that you have not ridden yet? Ooh, good question. For the manufacturer, the two standouts are obviously B&M and RMC. Um, I've been so close to getting on a B&M. Obviously, as I, I said previously, I almost got on Hollywood Dream at Universal Studios Japan. Too timid as a kid. Um, went to Gyeongju World in South Korea, screwed over by closures. So getting on one will be really like scratching a big itch for me. So B&M's probably top of the list. RMC, just the kings of the game right now. So that's a no brainer as well. After those two obvious ones, there are a few major manufacturers left that I haven't been on. Uh, Premier Rides, Schwarzkopf, um, the big wooden manufacturers. So I've been on a GCI and a Gravity Group, but not a PTC or a CCI. Um, so those older manufacturers are probably what I'm most looking forward to. And throw in Gia Vanola for the intrigue factor and RCCA out of morbid curiosity. <laughs> As for the models, that's a little more interesting uh, because there's things like Mark Extreme Spinners um, new generation Vacoma Tilt Coasters, SNS Fourth Dimension Coasters, all three of those are very high on my bucket list. And I'll tell you what, one that's up there would be the SNS Compressed Air Launch Coaster. There are a bunch in China that look absolutely crazy, and I would really love to see how the Compressed Air Launch rides compared to a, a hydraulic or a magnetic launch. I reckon some of them would be absolutely insane. And to include some strange and unique ones again, um, PAX Wild Trains and Interpark Wild Winds. I feel like Pax Wild Trains might be okay. Interpark Wild Winds I'm expecting might be got ungodly awful, but I just have to know for sure because they're so weird and they're meant to be so intense. So they're on the list as well. Coaster Kid, best B&M hyper you rode. Ouch, dude, that's so mean. I'll tell you one day. Tell you what, give me a week and a half and I'll tell you my favorite B&M. It will not be a hyper though, unfortunately. Hessler 27, how was Vin Wonders Park? Oh, great question. I would love to do a full video review of both of the parks that I went to in Vietnam because they were so weird and interesting. 
I went into that trip and I had absolutely no expectations. I was actually traveling um, with my girlfriend at the time. Uh, we spent most of our time in Ho Chi Minh City and we were kind of actually doing the touristy stuff, seeing Vietnam and it was not a coast of focus trip at all. But my birthday happened to be during the trip so we agreed for my birthday we're going to do a, a roller coaster day just to make it kind of a special day for me. Um, and there's not a lot of good roller coasters in Ho Chi Minh. I think there was like a BSA looper or something like that. Something really bad. So I did some Googling and I stumbled across, across Phu Quoc. Uh, looked it up, saw what it had there. It was an hour flight away from Ho Chi Minh. So I said, that's it. That's where we're going. And we booked it. And that was all the research I did because, you know, we were more focused on what are we going to do as a couple? Um, and what are we going to do for sightseeing? So I, other than the fact that there was a new Gen Vacoma and a GCI, that's all I really knew about the parks in advance. But those parks were so staggering and Vin Wonders in particular just blew me away. Um, it just comes seemingly, it's, it's in the middle of nowhere. You drive past this farmland and all these shanties selling fruit on the side of the road to get to it, but its scale and theming is absolutely huge. Um, you can see that it's clearly Disney inspired. I've also been to a Disney park as well in Tokyo and I have to say it's not far off in terms of sheer quality. It's absolutely jaw-dropping. Wrath of Zeus, really good, uh, with a couple of flaws, but very intense, which I love in a coaster. It's also got a huge collection of flat rides, which I wasn't expecting. Oh, and also a giant aquarium in the shape of a sea turtle with a waterfall coming out of its mouth. That's real, I swear. <laughs> Vin Wonders felt like a dream, it couldn't have been real. Um, it was a very huge park, so much to it, incredible design. Um, I love Wrath of Zeus. Eagle Warrior was also a very pleasant surprise. Um, I have to go back. I left Phu Quoc thinking a day trip was not enough. I loved every minute of that place. It was so baffling. It felt like another world. Um, I actually am going to do a review because I have some crazy stories to tell from that day too. Phu Quoc is a weird place. Dreiser89, what is your favorite coaster from each manufacturer you've ridden? Okay, I've spent a lot of time on the last few questions, so I'm going to go through the major ones quickly. Mark Rides, DC Rivals. GCI, Roaring Timbers. Gravity Group, Leviathan. Vacoma, Wrath of Zeus, Interman, Superman Escape, Arrow, Space Mountain, SNS, Green Lantern Coaster, Gerstlauer, Abyss, Maura, Buzzsaw. I've also been on coasters from Revachon, Preston and Barbieri, SBF, Pinfari, Interpark, Zamperla, DPV, and Senyo. Um, and not really particularly impressed with any of the coasters I've been on from them so far. And lastly, Harvey Humphreys, what is your bucket list coaster in the UK? Interesting question. UK is a country that I'm hoping to tick off the bucket list very soon, but I have big plans and I'm not gonna spoil them, so just make sure that you stay tuned. Uh, in terms of coasters that are currently open, I'd say that my top bucket list coasters are Smiler, uh, Alton Towers, because 14 inversions is just absolutely crazy, uh, and Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, because Mark Launch coasters, they can be hit and miss from what I've heard, but I've enjoyed the ones I've been on so far and I've heard that this one is absolutely fantastic. But above both of those, I would put Nemesis at Alton Towers with an asterisk that I don't know uh, whether the experience is gonna change once the renovation is done, uh, whether it's gonna get better or worse, we'll see. Uh, Nemesis in the form that it was last in would definitely be just about those. Uh, but it looks like it might turn out pretty great, so I'm excited to find out. And then I'd say there is one coaster that will top all of those when it opens, Project Exodus at Thorpe Park. Uh, that is a potential new number one coaster overall, for sure. Oh, and because I have to have a habit of including weird or quirky or unique coasters, um, Green Dragon at Greenwood Forest Park, and Tyrolean Tub Twist at Joyland Children's Fun Park. Thank you so much for all your questions. Once again, if you have any more questions, I would love to answer them in the comments. Thanks for watching uh, my face reveal slash Q&A video. Uh, stay tuned for plenty more content coming soon and I will catch you all in the next one. Oh, and uh, follow me on Instagram and TikTok.